The Mount Farm World Tour is back with part 2 of our Pandaria World Tour. In part 1 we covered the first half of Pandaria, so if you did miss that episode with the other World Tour episodes, there'll be a link in the description below to a playlist where you can check that out. But in part 2 we are going to continue our journey. Now that we're done in the Vale, we're going to be heading over to the Jade Forest, and in the Jade Forest you'll find the Aberatum. Here you'll be able to grind the reputation for the Order of the Cloud Serpent and you can't get rep tokens from the Warbringers or War Scouts for this faction, but there is a grindable method of getting rep. From this rep, once we hit Exalted, you will get the Azure, the Jade and the Golden Cloud Serpents. One will be for free at the end of the questline, and then the other two you'll purchase from the reputation vendor. To get this started, as I said, head over to the Jade Forest and the Aberritum, and then you'll find an NPC called Elder and Lee. And they'll send you on a quest line to go to the Windward Isle. You'll go there, you'll have a few quests to pick up some eggs and save the serpents and kill some mobs. And once you're done with all those quests, eventually you'll have another quest, which will be to pick an egg colour. That'll be for the Jade, the Azure, or the Golden Cloud Serpent. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, this is just which one you're going to get for free at the end of the quest line once you hit Exalted. So just pick whichever one you want, basically. And then you'll be sent back to Elder and Lee. And from that point, we can do the point that will give us the grindable reputation. So you can either keep doing the dailies if you want to, that, you know, they give a good chunk of reputation. Or if you head back to the Windward Isle, there'll be eggs around the island called Onyx Eggs. I'll show a map in a moment. But these are kind of around the edges, up on the ledges and stuff. And if you find an Onyx Egg, you'll loot it and you'll send it back to Elder and Lee and that will give you 500 rep per egg. So you can just keep flying around the Windward Isle getting as many eggs as possible and handing those in. Alternatively, if you head over to the Timeless Isle, which we'll talk about in more detail soon, there's a section called the Blazing Way and you'll find mobs called the Crimson Scale Firestorms there. Killing those will give you about a 10% chance of getting a Quivering Firestorm Egg. This is a BOA item, so you could farm it on a lesser populated realm. And if you send that back to Elder and Lee, that is going to give you a thousand reputation. So better than the Onyx eggs, but more difficult to come by. So it's up to you which way you want to go about it. Also, similar to the other reps at Revered, you can head over to the Quartermaster, who is in the same little area that Elder and Lee is. And you'll be able to purchase the item that will give you the double reputation up to Exalted. So definitely do that. Once you are Exalted, you can finish the quest line with Elder and Lee. That will give you your free mount and then you'll be able to go and purchase the other two as well. And there we go, that's the uh, Order of the Cloud Serpent done. Our next destination is going to be east of the Jade Forest. You'll find the Timeless Isle, so you can head out there by flying. Or alternatively, if you're in the Vale, you can head above Mogushan Palace. Chromie will be there with a quest that will give you an item that will teleport you directly there. If you never hand in that quest, just keep getting rid of it. And you can make use of that teleport whenever you want, basically. So on the Timeless Isle, our first mount is going to be the Heavenly Golden Cloud Serpent, a really nice looking mount. And this mount requires you to be exalted with the Emperor Shao Hao faction, and then have 100,000 Timeless Coins. That bit's not too bad, because we're going to be getting those passively anyway as we go along. So the way you get rep with Emperor Shao Hao is first of all by doing the dailies found around the Celestial Court, basically to do stuff on the Timeless Isle. And the main way is going to be killing the Yongol mobs found on the Timeless Isle. You'll find those in the Firewalker Ruins, the Blazing Way, and Ordon Sanctuary. Now, unfortunately, Ordon Sanctuary is only accessible if you have the Legendary Cloak from Mr. Pandaria, which is no longer obtainable. Some people do claim there's ways of kind of bugging yourself over there without being teleported out, but for the most part, you won't be able to access that. Either way, though, there are plenty of Yongol for you to kill in the Firewalker Ruins and Blazing Way, so just be killing those as you go along. And make sure you're looting the timeless coins as well and killing any Yongol rares that you see. You can also at Honored pick up the Scroll of Challenge for 500 coins. And if you take it to the Free Breeze Terrace which is kind of northwest of the zone. There'll be a pillar that will spawn every once in a while that you can activate. And there'll be a bunch of mobs that spawn there that will give you a good chunk of reps. That's worth doing as well. But keep grinding your way to Exalted. Get your 100,000 timeless coins and get yourself that really nice looking mount. Also in the Blazing Way you'll find a rare spawn called Hulon and this mob has a 1% chance of dropping the Thundering Onyx Cloud Serpent. Not a bad looking mount. This rare is on about a 40 to 50 minute respawn time and as I said you can find it in the Blazing Way. And where I am on the video right now is where it will spawn so you'll want to ideally be stood in this location as it dies very very quickly. So if you're not ready to get a tag on it you're probably going to miss out if you're on a fairly populated server. 
Now the cool thing about this rare is it can be killed multiple times per day and you'll still have a chance of getting loot. So you could kill it once or you could kill it 10 times in one day and every single time you kill it you'll have a chance of getting the mounts. That's worth noting. The final thing of interest here is also in the blazing way. You'll find this NPC called Speaker Gulen who will allow you to purchase the Fire Watcher's Oath which will allow you to kind of flag up and kill players and while this is active you'll gain these bloody coins. If you get 500 of these bloody coins, you can take them back to Speaker Gulan and purchase the Ash Hide Mush and Beast. This is going to be kind of a rough grind, but, you know, just keep popping it as you go along. It can be used in Battlegrounds, I believe, still. Kind of rough to use in Battlegrounds because you're probably going to die fairly quickly, but you'll be progressively working towards that. If your Timeless Isle is fairly active as well, you could also buy the Sensor of Eternal Agony, which can only be used on the uh, Timeless Isle, but it's a way of getting a few more coins as well. We're now done with the Timeless Isles, so next up we'll be heading over to Crassarang Wilds, and kind of in the southeast you'll find the Angler's Wharf. Here you'll find the reputation, the Anglers, and if you get exalted with them, you'll get the Azure Water Strider Mount. This is fairly straightforward, you'll just get fishing, with the fishing profession, and you'll unlock all of the dailies there, and then you'll just do the dailies every single day, it's to catch fish and kill mobs, fairly straightforward ones and keep gaining reputation. There's no grindable method with this, unfortunately. You just have to keep coming back and doing your dailies. Now, there is also an item at Revered as well that you can purchase that will give you that bonus rep, so do make sure you do that. And then there are a free bonus dailies that you can also hand in, and these are to catch these kind of rarer fish, the Flying Tiger Gorami, uh, the Mim Mimic Octopus, and the Spine Fish Alpha. Those are all going to give you an additional 350 rep per day each, so it is worth trying to get those and you can get them from the schools where the, the fish come from like the flying tiger fish or the octopus fish or you can get them in open water as long as the zone gives the fish that you know the special fish is related to basically. So if there are flying tiger fish that can be fished there then chances are you can get the kind of green rare version as well. Also in Krasarang Wild you'll have your main faction reputation to grind up to that's for Horde is going to be the dominance offensive and for Alliance Operation Shield Wall. To get this started, if you haven't got your base set up yet, then you'll want to head over to the Vale, and just in front of your base in Vale, like your Horde or Alliance hub, there'll be a Horde or Alliance NPC there, so for Horde it's this Tauren guy, who will give you the Predcrumb quest, I think it's the Scout or something, and that will take you over to Krasarang, and you'll begin setting up your base and aiding Garrosh, etc. And then once that's set up, you'll have Story Quests to do, which unlock every kind of X amount of reputation gained, and then you'll have daily quests. So you just want to be coming in here, doing your daily quests, doing the story quests when they pop up. And once you're done with the story quest, you'll be given the Grand Wyvern for Horde or the Grand Griffin for Alliance. And then at Exalted, you'll be able to purchase from the Quartermaster the Grand Armored Wyvern or the Grand Armored Griffin. There is also the revered item that you can buy that will give you that additional reputation. So do make sure you are purchasing that. And there is one additional daily you can also do as well in Half Hill in uh, Valley of the Four Winds, which we'll be getting onto in a little bit. But once you have your farm set up there, you'll be able to get an additional daily too. So if you want to maximize your rep, you want to make sure you're doing that too. The next stop on our world tour is going to be the Valley of the Four Winds and the river just across from the Silken Fields, you'll find the World Boss Galleon. Once again, that's on about a 15 minute respawn timer. And killing this will have about a 0.07% chance of dropping the Son of Galleon. Once again, you can use a charm on this, one of the greater charms of good fortune, to give yourself an additional chance at the mount each week. And as it is a world boss, you'll have one shot at this per character per week. Next up, you'll want to head over to Half Hill, which is pretty much in the middle of the zone. And from there, we're going to be able to get the three riding go mounts. These come from Tiller's Exalted. And to get started with the Tillers faction, you'll want to head to kind of the left side of Half Hill. There you'll find an NPC called Farmer Yoon. He'll have a quest for you. You'll go through his quest. You'll basically be setting up the farm and clearing it. And he'll teach you how to plant and grow things. And then eventually you'll unlock the dailies. There should be about five dailies per day to do. And then you'll also have story quests that will pop up as well as you progressively go through the reputation. And then also this faction does have the revered item that you can purchase that will give you that bonus rep to Exalted. So just keep coming back, doing your dailies, and then eventually you will hit Exalted and you can purchase the three riding goats. That's everything we need to do in Valley of the Four Winds, so next up we'll be heading over to Dread Wastes, where we'll be able to get the Amber Scorpion. 
This is going to come from the Kalaxi faction, and the main way of getting reputation from that is going to be from the Zandalari Warbringers and the Zandalari War Scouts again with those 1000 rep tokens. But the Kalaxi do also have dailies that you can unlock, and for that, you'll want to head over to the wall at Spider Ruins. There'll be an NPC on the wall that will give you a couple of quests. You'll run through those quests, you'll aid the Kalaxi, and then you'll be taken to uh, Kalaxi Vis, I think it's called, their like main base. Keep following through this main quest line eventually you'll unlock dailies and you just want to be doing the main quest lines that pop up and the dailies every day as well and then eventually you will hit exalted and you'll be able to purchase the amber scorpion from the faction vendor there this faction also does have the revered item that you can purchase that is going to give you that bonus rep all the way to exalted that's dread waste now done so next up we'll be heading over to town long steps and in town long steps you'll find an area called shadow pan garrison so you want to head there and we'll find the faction the shadow pan you get the shadow pan to exalted you'll be able to purchase the shadow pan riding tigers and also once you do hit exalted there'll be an additional quest called surprise attack which will give you the onyx cloud serpent so quite a few mounts from this faction just head over to the shadow pan garrison and do the dailies available there until you do hit exalted also you can kill the zendalari warbringers and the zendalari war scouts for those rep tokens and this faction also does have the revered item you can use that will give you that bonus rep too so grab that our final zone is now up on the world tour of pandaria and that is going to be the isle of thunder the first thing up there is going to be the crimson primal dire horn for horde and the golden primal dire horn for alliance that is going to come from the sun reaver offensive for horde and the kirin tor offensive from alliance once you do hit exalted and to get started with this we'll want to go to town long steps to shadow pan garrison which is where you should roughly be and just kind of north of the Shadow Pan Garrison, you'll find an NPC for Alliance. And a bit selfish, you'll find one for Horde. You'll pick up their quest, go through the chain, and that will take you to the Isle of Thunder. And continue questing through their chain. There'll be a bunch of quests to do, and also a few scenarios to go through. It'll take an hour or so, but once you're done with that, you'll have your base set up in the Isle of Thunder. And you'll be able to go to a mission table. And this mission table will allow you to select either PvE dailies or PvP dailies. I would recommend the PvE ones as those do give you more rep. And just keep basically doing those over and over again, coming back to the island, picking up any main story quests that pop up along the way, and then progressively working through the dailies too. Now there is a main grindable method for this as well, but it's exclusive to rogues. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link to that in the description down below. But for everyone else, you are only going to be able to do daily quests. The next mount on the Isle of Thunder is going to be the Thundering Cobalt Cloud Serpent. And this is going to be on about a 0.05% drop chance from Nilak. Nilak is a world boss you'll find just in kind of like the courtyard in front of the Throne of Thunder, which is northish of the island. And that is a world boss so you're going to be able to kill that once per week per character at about a 15 minute respawn and to have an additional chance at the mount you will want to have Mogu Runes of Fate. The final stop on our world tour of Pandaria is going to be the Throne of Thunder and you can do this on 10 man, 25 man, normal, heroic, it doesn't really matter, just head inside and make your way to the second boss Horridon. Killing Horridon will give you about a 3% chance of getting the spawn of Horridon mount. And then you'll make your way over to the 6th boss which is going to be Ji-kun. And killing G-Kun is going to give you about a 3% chance of the clutch of G-Kun mount. Now there's nothing really you need to know about this raid. It's pretty straightforward and linear. There is a bit after the fourth boss where you've got to kill or click four bells. or Sorry, three bells around the room. And that will summon the fifth boss. If you don't do that, the fifth boss won't spawn and you can't progress. Outside of that, there's nothing else that's really tricky or weird for you to know. And then also watch out for snails. They're pretty damn dangerous. Then there is also the Glory of the Thunder and Raider achievement meta that you can do in this raid. It is all technically soloable, and doing this will give you the Armored Sky Scream amount. But there are a couple of achievements that are pretty damn hard to solo, like Soft Hands and Crossing the Beams is Bad or something along those lines. So those might be a bit rough for you to solo, but you can give it a go if you want. And if you do need help, check out some discords. Hey, you could even check out my discord. There's a link in the description below. And there might be some people in there willing to help you out and get the achievements done. Outside of that, the last thing to talk about is time walking. When the Mr. Pandaria time walking is around, you can use your time warp badges on the Timeless Isle. There'll be a new NPC there. And you can buy reputation tokens for quite a few of the factions mentioned here. Most people use them on the Anglers because that's a daily only faction and people don't like doing fishing. 
so they, they kind of get through that with the time warp badges instead. Also with 5000 time warp badges you can buy the reins of the heavenly jade cloud serpent I think it is and that's another mount in your collection that you can get once time walking is around. And that officially brings us to the end of this world tour. So thanks for watching guys. Look out for more videos coming soon. See ya.